Good morning. It's Monday morning, August 31st, 2020. For science class today, you want to make sure you go to Canvas, click on your science class. Once you are in your science class, you're going to scroll down to the weekly assignments. You're going to click on weekly assignments. This week's assignments, August 31st, September 4th. That takes you to the weekly page for this week's work. <clears throat> You'll see the objective for today will be that you are able to develop a strong hypothesis. So understanding the difference between a strong and a weak hypothesis. That's going to be our work for today and tomorrow. So our warm-up this week is going to be a little differently than it, different than it was last week. Um, I'm going to walk away from the maps for a while, and I want to focus on a little bit of writing. So for this week, I want to go over the discussion expectations. Here we are in the center in the red box. Remember, <clears throat> full sentences, write two to three sentences in your post. Stay on topic, no conversational posts. And in the warm-ups and the exit tickets, you're only you are not going to reply to anybody. So you're just going to make your post and your post only. Now understand, these are the grading perspectives. So I'm looking for two to three sentences. I'm looking to see that you stayed on topic. And I'm looking to see that you did not reply to anybody else. And I'm looking to see that you didn't mark I don't know or type I don't IDK. Okay, that's not acceptable. <clears throat> When you go into the warm-up discussion, it's going to give you the topic, writing prompt, how do you use the scientific method in your everyday life? So you're gonna hit post, or you're gonna hit reply down here, and then you're gonna type your answer. Remember, here, here are the expectations again. Two to three sentences, stay on topic, no conversational posts, and no replies, okay? So that's gonna be your warm-up for today. Now I'm gonna back up. All right, that's the warm-up for today. Let's move down to today's mini lesson. So first thing I need you to do, you're going to notice here in the center of the page is a screenshot of a notebook that I have set up, okay? So it's a little small, but it, you might be able to zoom in on it a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in on it here. So you're going to set up a page in your notebook that looks like this. Observation on the left side, inference on the right side. And then you're going to split the page in half because you're going to do two different. <clears throat> you're going to split the page in half because we're going to do two different observation and inference assignments. The first one, the volcano, paint, volcano painting, we're going to do together. So that's where you're going to write down your observations and your inferences that we're going to do together right now. And then the bottom part will be for the three trees painting, and that's what you're going to do during independent work today. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit pause if you need to, to do that. Get this copied into your notebook, and then hit play, and we'll continue on. <clears throat> so when we talk about observation and inference, a lot of times people confuse the two, especially when we're talking about it from a science perspective. So when we're talking about observation and inference from a science perspective, observation is only those things that you can use your senses. You can see them, you can hear them, you can smell them, you can touch them. Or you can taste them. Now, in science class, we don't taste things very often because there's a lot of dangerous things in science class, a lot of powders that are, um, that are poisonous. So you can touch them. You just can't ingest them. So we don't taste things very often unless we're absolutely certain that it's something that we can taste. But in general, these are the, these are the four, five ways that we do observation. What do you see? What do you hear? Um, what do you feel? What do you smell? And sometimes what do you taste? So if you look at the, if you look at the anchor chart, it says uh, questioning, research, and background information. Those are really the first, uh, first two steps, first two steps of the scientific method. Um, they start with observation and inference. So you have to understand what an observation is. You have to understand what an inference is. And that's actually the process that you go through to find your background information or to do research. So an observation, what do you see, hear, feel, smell, taste? Okay, so examples, um, I see an animal. Um, I feel fur. I smell, I smell bad breath. I hear barking. Those are, those are observations that I've made. 
Okay. So that's observation. Now, if we talk about inference, inference is a decision you make. In the case of what we're getting ready to do, it's about the painting that we're looking at. A decision you make about the painting based off of the observations. Well, if we look in the anchor chart again, if our observations are, I see an animal, I feel fur, I smell bad breath, I hear barking, what's the inference? Well, the inference is it's, it's probably a dog. Okay. Now, if I just said I see an animal, would you have known it was a dog? Probably not. There are lots of animals besides dogs. I feel fur. Well, there's a lot of furry animals out there, rabbits and and you know foxes and things like that um i smell bad breath well most of these animals you ain't gonna be getting close enough to to smell their bad breath but everybody knows that dogs have stinky breath and then i hear barking well there's not a whole lot of animals that bark so it kind of narrows it down for us so we can make an inference so we're going to follow the same process as we work through this vid this this painting Okay, so don't make the mistake of putting inferences in the observation part. Okay, so if you're doing observations about this painting, you're not going to say, oh, that's a volcano. That's not an observation. The observation is there's fire coming out of the top of that mountain. There's smoke. There's a river of orange hot stuff that's flowing down the side. Those are your observations. I smell what smells like um, if you were standing there, what would you smell? Well, you would smell like rotten eggs because that's sulfur. That's the smell that comes from a volcano. What would you feel? Well, probably heat. I feel heat. Um... I feel scared. Why, why would you feel scared? Well, there's things happening. It's destroying. You can see in the background, destroying the, the lava is destroying the village. So, of course, there's going to be fear here. Would you taste anything? Well, with all the ash in the air, it's probably falling on you. So you're probably getting a little bit of it in your mouth. So you're probably tasting the ash. So your observations, I see fire. I see a river of lava. I see smoke. Um, I see damage being done to buildings. The inference would be it's a volcano erupting. Okay. Well, what other observations are there? Let's take a closer look here. See if we can zoom in a little bit on this. So if we look a little closer here, what do we see? Well, observations. What do we see? What do we see? Um, we see a light in the sky. Okay. We see a light in the sky. We see boats. Some big boats. Some small boats. We see a lot of people fleeing or running away crossing this bridge. What else do you see? See a carriage right here? There's an old guy on a cart right there. Just laying there. You see mountains in the background? Now look over here. Look at this part of the water compared to this part of the water. Okay, there's more light over here. And this part of the city is lit up a little differently than this part of the city over here. This part of the city has an orange glow. This part of the city has a white glow. So those are observations. Okay, so um, inferences. Let's look at some inferences here now. Um, so what can we decide about this? Well, the first one we've already mentioned was uh, there's a volcano erupting. Okay. Um, second one, uh, well, second inference, people are running to escape the fire. Okay, we can see that they're running, but we're assuming, we don't know this for a fact because we're not there, we haven't talked to anybody. We're assuming that because of the volcano, these people are running away. Okay, ships over here taking people from the city and getting them away. Uh, is it day or night? Ah, good question. Is it day or night? Um, 
So maybe we're gonna say night. Look how dark it is in the front of this picture. And they've got they've got fires going here and here. But isn't that a weird place for a fire in right in the middle of the street? And they're carrying torches. But not everybody is carrying torches. Don't you think if it was night this far back and everybody was out and about at night, don't you think everybody would be carrying a torch or a lot of people carrying a torch? Okay. Somebody might say, well, it's daytime. Well, how do you know that? Well, if you look back here, the water, the light on the water is very different than the light up here. So maybe it's daytime and this side of the painting is clouded by the ash cloud created by the volcano. Does that mean the person who says it's daytime is right and the person who says it's nighttime is wrong? No. Those are your inferences based off of based off of the observations that you've made. Now, the only way to prove that would be to do a little research. Anybody know what the name of this this volcano is? Vesuvius. Vesuvius. So you do a little research on Vesuvius, you find out what time it erupted, and then you know if it's day or night. But based off of the painting alone, we can't determine that. We can make assumptions, we can make inferences based off of what we see, but we don't know for sure. Okay, so that's observation and inference. So what I would like you to do, um, during independent time, I'm going to be doing some small group work. There's the small groups that I'm going to have today. I'll explain more about that if you were in the live class. For the independent practice, on the bottom part of your page here, down here, you're going to be recording five observations and five inferences for this three trees painting. So here's your three trees painting. I want you to write down five observations, things that you would see, feel, smell, or touch. Uh, if Say if you were in this painting, if you were standing in there, what would you see, hear, smell, or touch? And then five inferences, five decisions that you make about your, your observations. Okay, That's your independent work for today. If you have any questions, send me an email or a Canvas message. I'll be happy to help. Have a great day.